In this episode of The Swing Report, we are looking at new Fairy Woods for 2022, TaylorMade Stealth and TaylorMade Stealth Plus. Thomas will hit some shots and we'll look at all the TrackMan data and tell you everything you need to know. And also make sure you skip to the final chapter for our final take on the TaylorMade Stealth Fairy Woods. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahal of the Second Swing Golf. Today I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. New Fairy Woods for 2022, tailor-made Stealth and Stealth Plus. Uh, brand new Stealth line, uh, looks awesome. Uh, I'm a big fan of the new look, uh, but we gotta dive into the technology, the performance, all that good stuff that the golfers are here to find out. So Thomas, give me your first impression. You're, you got them right here on the desk. Um, it, I, I, clearly a, a new look, 100%, but uh, does that do anything for you when you look at them, or you were just worried about the performance today? Yeah, black, clean, anyway, black sexy, right? Yeah. So yeah. that looks really good to look down at. Uh, it's got a nice black crown, it's got a nice black face mm -hmm. as well. It's, uh, it's a good looking club. Now there's some subtle differences between the two of them. So the plus model is a little smaller club head. Mm -hmm. So you're talking 175 cc's. Yep while the Stealth model is 190 cc's, and, that, and mm -hmm. that's for the three wood. So it's gonna be a little more compact and probably a little lower spinning model with the Stealth Plus. Yeah, and actually one thing in the Stealth Plus, so it's actually more playable than past, you know, that, that titanium head of a Sim tie, Sim 2 tie. The, the, they've made the Stealth Plus, which is that kind of titanium model, more playable. So it, it's basically trying to appeal to more players with that club head. Uh, a little bit more forgiveness, larger than past ones, and that club face has been expanded a little bit too. So should get more playability out of those, you know, for the players maybe swing fast, but maybe aren't as, uh, you know, consistent or hit the center of the face. Should get a little bit more forgiveness there than you would have in the past with that model. But there is a lot of technology here, Thomas, and I think, you know, the big thing that we should note though too, that, you know, you look at the, the stealth drivers, you see that kind of red carbon face. That's not the case with these fairy woods. There's still that kind of, that black and the titanium face, at least on the titanium one here. Uh, and then you have the miraging steel face on the stealth model. So uh, those big things, but then also the V-Steel technology. So that's been brought back last couple of years. You got the V-Steel weight uh, plate here. Uh, it's that kind of 80 grams that's on the plus model uh, that design that basically it's for turf interaction, smooth turf interaction. And you have the stealth design here on the, uh, or excuse me, the, the V-Steel design on the stealth, uh, but not quite that as heavy of a plate. So basically both of those designs are to help with turf interaction, smooth and easy out of fairways, rough, bunker, you name it. That's what that's designed for. Yeah, and they both still have that through slot speed mm -hmm. pocket. Um, twist face is still there as well. Right. So it's gonna help with, on those off center miss, miss misses as well there too. Um, it's, I'm excited to test it. I would expect that the, the Stealth Plus might spin a little less and be a little hotter. It's adjustable as well. So the nice thing with the, with the self Stealth Plus is you still have the adjustable mm -hmm. hosel. The Stealth model is just a bonded head. Okay, that's good to know actually for fitting purposes too. Then we should also go through these stock shafts. So we've got uh, on one hand, we have the Hazardous Smoke RDX Red, which is, I believe, a new one. That's kind of a more, kind of a mid to low launcher. And then that Ventus um, Red is gonna be a little bit higher launching, a little bit lighter in flex there too. So uh, a couple of options there for the stock shafts, but, and they, you know, they also coincide, at least uh, for our purposes with, you know, the club, right? So the, you know, lower launching shaft, the Smoke RDX Red, gonna be in the Stealth Plus, a uh, lot of explosiveness though. Uh, and the, the drivers, we've, we've tested those, we're really impressed. I'm sure the three woods uh, here will I'll match that. All right, well, let's get to testing. All right, so Thomas, you've got this stealth model. Uh, look down at a dress and you know, tell me what you see when you look down at that thing. A lot of black. Yeah. A, a, lo a lot of black. Um, it's, it's not shiny either. Now there's a little bit of a, a wrap around the crown that is a little bit shinier, but the, the rest of the crown is like kind of like, like that nice matte finish to okay. it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, it, and it, honestly what it is, it's stealthy. I mean, that's kind of, <laughs> seriously, that's what it is. Like that's, uh, that's a good way to, to describe it. They named their, uh, you know, they named the line pretty well because I think that's uh, one way to describe that kind of all black look that they went away from the colored kind of deal Actually, I, now that I think about this, the Sim 2 Rescue had that all black look. 
It did, uh, yeah. And so they kind of maybe hinted at that a little bit and going away from the multicolored crown. Yeah. Yeah, I'm noticing, you know, talking about the, the glossy areas, it's got, it's kind of wrapped around the, the front here mm -hmm. and also wrapped around the back, at the back end here too. And I think that's a little to do with that CG with the V-steel at the back there. Yeah, so sure. I'm noticing that at a dress. But otherwise, very clean, you know, like I mentioned, black finish. Looks like it's gonna go pretty far. All right, so let's get this Trackman test going here. We've got the Stealth 3 wood. Oh my word. <laughs> That's one of the That's straightest shots I've maybe ever seen. It's a great start. A little face to path of 0, 0.0. Wow. Nice and straight again. What is it about that club that you're swinging it so pure and getting <laughs> such well, little, so every number, you know, the, the, the path, face angle, and face to path is all right around zero right now. I don't know. I must present some confidence because I, I must say that of all the clubs in my bag I don't have confidence with is my fairway wood. Okay. And yeah, I have some thoughts going through my head right now about hitting fairway wood <laughs> off the ground. But not going to lie, those numbers there are pretty, pretty good. Spin rate was right around about 2,800 RPMs yeah. on both those two shots. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Yeah, that's I'm a really good lie. start. Yeah. A little more ball speed there. Yep. Turn that one over just a little bit more. Wow. So, and then, I mean, numbers wise, is kind of, you're seeing the distance numbers here. Is that typically what you're used to out of three wood? I know. About 280, oh, sorry, 260 carry going 280 is usually what I've seen okay. out of three so, wood. Yeah. Just going just a little bit further. It's a good ball. That's such a drop kick. Oh my god. <laughs> so the funny thing is, you said you're at, you like to go for 260 carry and 280 <laughs> total. I mean, four and four yards short of 260, it exceeded 280 total. Yeah, now I, I know because it's the knuckleball effect. The spin went down a ton. Yeah. I get that. But I had a little bit of a hissy fit. That one I hit the ground first and then kicked onto the bowl. Yeah. Um, but it's forgiving. <laughs> It's been rain drop, but yeah. I was not expecting those numbers after hitting that shot. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so that was a little lower on the face on that shot. Okay. I mean, I hit it a little bit. It's interesting better, you say that because but, you know, like you said, you're you're going for 280 total. You're going for 260 carry, and you basically hit those numbers. Yep. And it's funny because you still got a one five zero smash. But I can see, I can, I can clearly tell you got it low on the face just based on that spin going up a little bit. Yeah, just uh, went up a little bit more. I mean, the what shot before was clearly a, a drop yeah. kick off the toe, but that one was just a little bit, a little bit lower on the face. Mm -hmm. So let's kind of look at, you know, we got five shots, um, and then based on, you know, I think the out, well, the the, uh, the outlier actually, you'd think it'd be this fourth one that you kind of knuckleballed up there, but. I mean, looking at the spin rate, yeah, it, it well, was. The spin but rate, you yes. can probably just leave Now, it we, got, we can look at carry here. We can kind of see the difference there. But I will say, look at these three here. Um, you got three, what is this? We got shot, what, two, we got shot five, and we got shot one. One, two, five, right next to each other, you know, landing very similar. Um, so we, let's, for the sake of kind of how we've been doing some of our, our testing, let's take that out. We'll have these four shots to look at for numbers. And then we'll break this down quickly, and then we'll get to the Stealth Plus. OK. Um, 105 club speed, 157.1 on the ball speed, uh, just over 3,000 on the spin, 265 carry, 284.8 total. Not bad. Yeah. Pretty solid numbers right good there. Good numbers, uh, good height to 111 feet in the air. It's pretty good for off the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, landing angle coming there. got some. Some stopping power, but also that spin rate staying down if I need to hit it off the tee as well. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah and I mean, and here right now, there's, we're not hitting off the tee. It's, you're just kind of hitting off the, the mat and still getting comfortably enough height and landing angle that you would need in the stopping power as well. Launch angle at 12.7. Um, pretty good stuff. So now, before hitting the Stealth Plus, what, do you, what would you expect to see as differences there? Well, let's grab the Stealth Plus first, and let's talk about the looks between the two of them. Um, so looking down 
And it is actually kind of noticeable. And I talked about in the intro a little bit about that the CC difference. You're mm -hmm. talking 15 CC yeah. smaller with the 190 to 175. I can see that. I definitely can see that overall. Um, it's a little bit smaller left to, left to right. And the stealth model, you can definitely see how it's kind of pushed, the weight's pushed back yeah. all the way back to try and get that bottom launch up a little bit. Yeah. So, so with that being said, possibly a little faster ball speed, possibly a little lower spin okay. and a lower ball flight. Yeah, because I mean, I, I will note, you know, the, the V-Steel design is a little bit different where they, there's actually an 80 gram plate kind of still dropping that center of gravity a little bit in the the you know the stealth plus despite the fact that it is a more compact head so yeah yeah who's just i mean I, I i agree with your hypothesis but i don't know if it'll be that different i guess we'll see well keep in mind also right now this is our initial testing we don't have any other golf shafts yet, right but so, so this is going to be a little different it's got the ventus red versus the uh the hazardous smoke so that might play a little bit into it mm -hmm. but i can definitely notice a difference in the weight because i know this one's a little bit lighter than oh, this okay okay so we, too. yeah so it's not gonna be a perfect head-to-head -head test based on the bonnet hosel but yep. let's, let's uh, see let's, how it performs i'll hit the stealth plus here so that was a little low on the face wow really it was it stage, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it i feel like it was but well you know what Nice thing about TrackMan is that we can go check that. It was. Right. Not that you were lying. I would never <laughs> accuse you of lying, but uh, it's just crazy to see that that was where you hit it and you still had a low spin like that. Yeah. And almost generated 300 yards of distance. That ball speed was hot there too. Yeah. yeah. This feels like a sledgehammer in my hand. <laughs> see, how did that one feel? It felt good too. You felt like that yeah. was off the center or no? Or maybe just a touch lower. I'm only again. asking because it, the spin number is very similar to your last one. Yeah, I'd say probably just a little bit low. Now, when I hit up on the ball for fairy woods, it's hard for me. That's why I have a hard time with fairy woods off the ground because mm -hmm. my attack angle is up. Yeah. So I'm always going to catch it just a little low on the face. Okay. Unless I catch it heavy. Yeah. Well, yeah, like you, you had one in the first five shots. Right. Yes. Left. Yeah. Just a little bit kind of closed face there. Yeah, that one felt like it was closer to the middle of the face at least. I just had that face a little bit closed on it. Well, you hit it 300, 300 yards. yards. <laughs> there we go. That's some heat. I usually don't find too many fairy woods I can get 300. Mm -hmm. There's that drop kick. Let's see how this one works out. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the kind of uh, knuckleball effect there. That's the same as what we noticed with the stealth before. I got a little bit low on, the, um, hit the ground just a little bit before. Yeah. My ball speed dropped a little bit. But yeah. But then it, just, spin. it didn't spin as much. And so yeah. you're seeing that ball fly a little bit more efficiently. But yeah, I guess that's, I mean, you're susceptible to that with your positive attack angle. So <laughs> a little more forgiving on these mats yeah. versus maybe, you know, turf. Right. Uh, uh, real grass, but. Yeah. I mean, I didn't feel like it. That was a very good swing, yeah. but the one yeah. almost hit it. Hey. <laughs> 300 yards. The track man says 297 yards on a dead straight ball flight, so. Could miss it. I'm curious on this one, too. Yeah. Same kind of thing, a little low on the face. I think okay. a lot of my strikes there were a little low. A little low on the face? Yeah. So, let's see if we can bring these up here. And then we have. Pretty similar pattern, really. Really? Yeah, you're right. Go. Mean, we had, see, I did want to bring up this one, which I know that was, the, it's funny, you know, <laughs> that was the one that uh, I was going to take out, but it's, it's right next to these other two. Right. Um, but just for the sake of. Uh, we know that was the other one that was here. We did the same thing with the other kick. one. So, but you've got this, yeah, that, you, you mentioned the pattern. I mean, that's exactly what it is. So if I expand the uh, map here, kind of talk about that, but you got, you know, you're, kind of that tendency just to have maybe a, a shot or two with a closed face, turn it over. But we did notice a bit more distance and speed, I thought, um, initially from the plus model, which was kind of what you had predicted. Yep. And I think there's a little bit less spin as well. Mm -hmm. I think it was about two or 300 RPMs comparing the good strikes. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like I still hit a lot of the low on the face with the, with the Stealth Plus. So I'd expect, yes, a little less spin overall with that particular model. And then uh, I did want to ask you about the feel difference, if there was one between the Stealth Plus and Stealth, just because there is the different 
um, you know, club face material there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is there anything that jumps out at you with that Zaytec titanium versus you know, the the kind of the standard miraging steel in the itself? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mentioned I think after shot two, this feels like a sledgehammer. Yeah, that's what it felt like. It just it just felt like it was so solid off the face, and okay. I just felt like it was just a bullet that was going to go really far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a little heavier. Sure. Yeah. Um, so let's bring up the numbers now. Uh, break break down these numbers for me. There's you, you did predict and kind of. Uh, you kind of noted the spin was lower, for sure was lower. A little lower launch with the Stealth Plus, even Definitely though I hit lower. a couple a little low on the face. Yeah. Um, yeah, lower spin by 250 RPMs on average, consistently lower as well. So looking at that plus or minus number. Right, that consistency, which is that deviation is yeah. very low. Yeah, so two different bull flights really. Mm -hmm. the, the Stealth was flying a little higher with a little more spin, while the, the Stealth Plus was just a rocket. Really. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, I mean, that, and that's kind of what it's, it's supposed to be, you know, there's, it's supposed to be kind of that lower, more penetrating type of, of ball flight. So that it certainly seems like they're accomplishing that with, you know, the, the Stealth Plus model. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, it seems like really good performance because I know the numbers that you had told me at the beginning in terms of what you typically get from your three wood. And I'm seeing much higher numbers out of both of these models in testing. Yeah, I'm impressed. When I can not hit a drop kick or catch a little on the face, right. there's no doubt that this is gonna is gonna go pretty far. Mm -hmm. But that's for me to work on on my swing to improve <laughs> yeah. my attack angle. Right. right. Yeah. All right. So Thomas testing complete. That's the TaylorMade Stealth Fairy Woods for 2022 Stealth and Stealth Plus. Um, one thing I didn't note earlier is the loft offerings. So. In the Stealth, you have basically your 3-wood, your 5-wood, your 7-wood, and your 9-wood. So that's 15, uh, 18, 21, 24. And then there's also kind of that high lofted 3-wood at 16 and a half. The uh, Stealth Plus has that kind of rocket model, the 13-degree 3-wood, 15-degree, and then a 19-degree 5-wood. So uh, there's your kind of loft offerings, and it kind of does show, too, a little bit what the club's aimed at doing. You know, that, that Stealth Plus is kind of aimed at that lower penetrating flight. And then, again, the Stealth model is kind of basically for giving this higher launch. Yeah, we can't forget about that, that rocket model for mm -hmm. those golfers that are trying to bring spin rate down or even have a hard time with their driver and want to throw sure. it off the yeah. tee. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a definitely a great replacement. Mm -hmm. And when it is adjustable, you can definitely make that a club a really like anti-left fairway wood mm -hmm. by yeah. turning that thing to lower and oh, it can yeah. be a, a real rock. Really, you know, windy conditions just going into the wind, you can hit that thing at what, 11 or 11 and a half degrees and just hit that penetrating right. low and that can't hook at all based yeah. on that adjustment, yeah. Yeah, but, but comparing the numbers between these with both 15 degrees of loft, we definitely noticed the Stealth Plus just had a little bit more, a little bit more ball speed mm -hmm. to it. Uh, so it's definitely gonna be for those players that generate a little more club speed, the Stealth Plus versus the Stealth. I think the Stealth is just going to be a forgiving, yeah. easy to hit straight Fury Wood. And I think we see that with the driver as well. It is just a little bit little bit hotter. Yeah. CG placements just push a little bit further forward. So we'll notice that, yeah, the Stealth Plus is probably for those faster swing speed golfers. Well, the Stealth is just for your right. generic right. I mean, golfers. The, the spin's going to stay down for a faster swinger with yep. the Plus models of, well, now three wood, but also, also with driver. You see that spin stay a little bit more controlled. Uh, whether and we notice too with driver and now three wood that you might not be hitting the center of the face, but it's still going to be pretty consistent with the spin, which is something that you know I know a lot of golfers need in their game that consistent spin. They know what to expect, uh, and maybe know what to expect if you don't quite hit it perfectly. So that's something I was really impressed with uh, in this test today. Right. Yeah, and I was I wasn't hitting it putting it perfectly either. I mean, I pulled up that uh, where I was hitting on the club face. <laughs> yeah, it was as I mentioned. I was talking. I was catching just a little bit low on the face, and that's for me to improve on. But even still, catching at that low on the on the face, and still getting numbers, spin rate numbers this mm -hmm. low, and ball speed numbers that hot. I know I, I was leaving something on the table. Yeah, and that's with both of the models. So mm -hmm. uh, I find it interesting. Yeah, Stealth Plus is a little hotter. It's going to spin less, and it's going to fly a little bit lower. When I was hitting the Stealth Plus, the highest I hit it was 105 feet in the air. And I was hitting the, the stealth, the uh, lowest I hit it was 103. So mm -hmm. it was clearly about 14 feet higher mm -hmm. with the stealth model. So that's going to give you that little bit more yeah. spin and rise. So the so we have we've kind of pegged the the stealth plus sort of for players that you know maybe swing fast um, and kind of need to control spin. Uh, but the stealth model now, uh, I would imagine it's going to be it's going to cater towards maybe more golfers. 
uh, than the Plus. It's going to have basically any golfer that kind of needs some extra performance out of the fairway, maybe some easier launch out of the fairway. Um, and then I think one thing we should note too is to consider the loft options that's not just your three wood, but there's also, again, the 18 degree five wood, the 21 degree seven wood, and even the nine wood. Those are things that you're seeing more and more become uh, you know, the right option for golfers as those clubs can generate a ton of high launch, easy launch and height at those spots where maybe a four iron, five iron might not get it done for a player. Yeah, we're, we're seeing a lot of that trending in the last couple mm -hmm. of years where higher lofted fairway woods are helpful, especially for golfers that maybe don't generate enough spin or have enough speed. Mm -hmm. Carry distance is imperative when you're trying to get the ball to go a certain distance. Yeah, for sure. So we're kind of seeing how that the club design and you know the the ball speed and performance. You know, you're going to do really well. I mean, maybe you put a couple of these in the bag. Maybe it's a three wood and a seven wood. Maybe it's a five wood and a nine wood. Whatever might be the right for your game. Putting both of those in the bag could be a huge benefit to transitioning then from kind of your irons all the way up through those fairy woods and then into your driver. But um, that's kind of you know where I see these these kind of clubs being different is just. Again, the Stealth Plus, built for that kind of penetrating low flight. And then the Stealth is just based on forgiveness. It's kind of give you that higher launch, easier launch, and get that ball off the turf for those golfers that maybe can struggle with that sometimes. Right, yeah, and that's, yeah, I would say that. And I think that the V-Steel design, mm -hmm. his design, exactly what you said, help the golfer get through the turf and get the ball up in there. For sure, well golfers, uh, the TaylorMade Stealth Fairy Woods, uh, really good performance here in the testing today. Should be great options here in 2022 and beyond. You know where to get fit, that second swing golf, uh, either at one of our store locations or through our online fitting and support team. Uh, Thomas, thanks for joining today. This is, again, it's gonna be a great option for golfers moving forward. Uh, I think they'll be really excited about this one. Yep, I think it's gonna be a great 2022 for TaylorMade.